brand new member of Mintech. Mm -hmm. uh, Linda, stand up. And is my feet on the street, native here. <laughs> nobody, nobody in this crowd is going to buy from anybody from New York, okay? <laughs> New York is off limits, I get that, so it's okay. Now, I want to talk about sustainable workplaces. I think that, first of all, my two, for the first two presenters were amazing, large scale, incredible. But how does it impact us? What can we do? That's what I want to talk about because we waste energy every day in our workplace. And we have an opportunity to seize that opportunity and do something about it and solve some other problems along the way. I'm gonna talk about the current state, a little bit of how we got here. I think a lot of people know that, but I wanna re kind of rehash it. Then talk about what is the impact on our work workplaces at home and at work on sustainability, energy costs, and other corporate sustainability initiatives as well, because we can't forget that. I'm also going to talk about hybrid work and the impact on sustainability there. And I think I should probably spend some time a little bit on what is a smart workplace in the first place, what are the components of that, and what's required. Go over a case study of what the benefits can be, and then kind of close it up. Now, there's three trends going on right now that are undeniable. Number one. We thought when the pandemic ended, everybody was going to come back into the office and everybody was going to resume the normal. I know. It's funny, right? It's funny when now, but that's what we thought, right? Oh, I can't wait to get back in the office, see Joe again. But the reality is hybrid work is kind of here to stay. I'm going to talk a little bit about what companies are doing about that. But, you know, innovation happens when people are together. Innovation happens when people are communicating when teams work. So that's the first thing. Number two, we're all driving toward this net zero scenario where we have less of a mark on our uh, environment and we're running clean as an organization and as people. Number three, and I'll share some statistics on this later on, but if you don't believe that there is a shift to more climate conscious workforces, you're crazy. My generation, I'm 56 years old, by the way, everybody under me cares a lot. And they're very educated about it. And now I care about it because of that, right? So we call it a perfect storm, call it what you want. This is what we're talking about. Let's run some stats. Non-residential buildings are responsible for 40% of energy expense, 40%. 35% of all greenhouse gases come from commercial real estate. It is estimated that 30% of that energy generated in buildings goes completely to waste. In addition to that, we have this other little thing going on, which is our workers. They're not in the buildings yet. 76% of them want flexibility in where they work. These are people entering the force. Sure, they cut a couple emissions by not being in a car. We could argue that, but mm, we still need to innovate. We still need to be sustainable as organizations. We still need to make money. We still need to be profitable or else it doesn't matter, right? So where they are kind of matters and including them into the mix matters a lot. Up to 84% said the ability to work from anywhere drives their decision to take a job. All this means there's less people in the building. But the building doesn't know that. The building's stupid. So when nobody's there, the air conditioning still runs. When nobody's there, the heater still runs. The lights are still on. And the problem compounds. In walks the smart workplace. Let me define this. Simply put, a smart workplace, you can read, <laughs> refers to a technologically enhanced and connected environment. Connectivity is where it, it really lives. It leverages smart devices, sensors, ties it back to central systems, then makes decisions based upon the knowledge that it gains. Some features that would it include, easier connectivity and collaboration tools, and I'll talk about that a lot in the case studies, automation, artificial intelligence, and really adding process and logic 
to very simple things. Data, data analytics to make better decisions, I'll give you an example. If we know how many people are in certain areas of the building every day, we can start to make decisions about where to build more, where to take away, and where to move and allocate resources, right? And then, of course, personalization, productivity, and security. If we're going to create a dynamic environment that welcomes people from the outside to come in and hotel and supports innovation and work groups inside the building, well, then we have to make sure we're picking up the identity of these people and making a workplace that was plain vanilla personalized to them. It makes it easier to work. It makes it more welcoming. All of their directories are there, their contacts and their business processes and documents. So that's what a smart workplace is. Now, let me give you further examples of how that smart workplace can really save you money. Smart HVAC systems. Look at it this way. If I walk into a conference room and five other people were supposed to be there, but they decided to work from home, and the room knows that because there's sensors there, <laughs> then it can make intelligence decisions on what to keep the temperature at. In addition to that, I can have occupancy sensors that can save up to 68% in energy waste. They're big numbers. And here's a funny thing, blinds. Who cares about blinds? Put them up, you put them down, you're hot, you're cold, whatever. 70% are st completely static. I was in a conference room in the city, waiting for my appointment. All of a sudden, without notice or knowledge, the entire east side of the building started to lower. There was a sensor triggered, hey, it's getting warm, the sun's setting, boom, down they go. We can't rely on humans to make these decisions. They can be completely automated. So let me give you a kind of a working example. We, you know, we'll keep uh, the names innocent, but we have a large multinational manufacturer that had the challenge that I just laid down. They had massive amounts of their workforce that were now remote. At the same time, they had over 20 million square feet of office space. So what they did, and what a lot of people are doing, is they consolidated seven regional offices into one. Now think about the problems that, well, first of all, that's a cost savings to them. Let's not deny that. But now all of a sudden, that space that was just done, by the way, pre-pandemic, and a lot of money was spent, was no longer feasible. It was no longer functional. A lot of individual offices, all the offices were all along the windows. Why? Because they were the execs and they want the view, right? But if we're going to invite the whole world into that facility, all of that has to go. We now need dynamic spaces. We need open format spaces. We need spaces that invite a collaborative environment. But as we do that, every team that meets inside the building has components of that team that are now outside of the building. So we need to implement technology that can seamlessly bring those into those environments using, I don't want to get into the technical terms, but making sure microphones only pick up a certain diameter around these open spaces, white noise is removed, things of that nature. But now we're being inclusive, right? We can't leave the people outside on an island they have valuable contributions to make. They're important to the innovation of a company and to the long-term sustainability of that company. At the same time, we wanna welcome and make a comfortable environment to incentivize those people to come back into the office where they can be more effective. We call it using a magnet rather than a mandate. I'm gonna steal something that somebody I can't, I don't know where he is. Someone once said 80% of mandates never work. I don't know about that, but prior to the pandemic, they had 19 video endpoints. Today, that same space has 92. 
That's the difference. <laughs> Energy consumption down 47%. That's done through power over ethernet. Big part of that, over 5,000 real-time data points. They're sensors that live in video endpoints and in lights and in tables. And we've had a CapEx reduction of over $250,000. So the dream is real. We can get there. But how do we get there? Everybody here works in an office. Everybody here has a home office. You're aware of the challenges I just described. The first step is understanding what you have and what you want your outcome to be. We have consulting services. You don't have to use us. You can use whoever you want, but you need to understand what is required for you to get that outcome. What is the cost? Who needs to be involved in that? We've done 24 of these projects. They're big. They're complicated. And I'll tell you, they live with IT, but very much outside of IT. We have IT. A lot of times we have HR, because they want to make sure everybody's included. They want to make sure that you know that deal. Then we have real estate. We have facilities. And in almost every instance, we've had an executive sponsor as well. And these are not small companies. So it matters. They care. So my advice to you, if you have interest, reach out to that consultant. It won't cost you anything. Not up front anyway. Learn what you can do because there's a really great opportunity here, not only to save money and to be more sustainable, but to bring your workforce together to innovate. If you try to pitch sustainability without showing your senior managers how it's going to make money, you're not going to get it. They have to be combined. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.